Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first lesson on our Patreon page. This, uh, to reiterate, this is derived from Itten's basic course for the Bauhaus related to drawing. And as you can see, I have a off-white piece of paper. Again, if you have copy paper, that will work. For uh, using charcoal, this is just a piece of willow charcoal. A little paper with a little tooth is always helpful. But again, you can do this with graphite. It just may take a little bit longer. You can do it with, um, with vine charcoal, with compressed charcoal, however you feel. Um, I just feel this is uh, one of the easiest methods to, to use. The first exercise sounds very straightforward. It will be to draw a white circle. That's it. So just draw a white circle. So I'll give you all a moment to do that. And then uh, many of you may have something that looks something like that. Not a perfect circle, but I understand where you're going. Um, and I will tell you, this is not a white circle. So if this is uh, what you started off with, you need to make some adjustments. What do I mean this is not a white circle? Well, if we assume the paper is white, I have white on the outside and white on the inside, and that makes this a black loop, like a black hoop. So if I want a white circle, I have to think about what, what do I have to do to make absolutely sure that the viewer knows it's a white circle. If you're thinking about this question, I think the answer can be found is if you draw a black circle. So let's come up here and then in a smaller, smaller circle, we'll make this a black circle, okay? Just really easy, really gentle. Um, and I'm not looking for perfection here. You can see I'm not using an eraser, so I'm just moving kind of slow, really thinking about what I'm doing. And I have a pretty good black circle here. Also using these small kind of strokes allows me to really kind of form the edges. Um, oops, don't do that. Um, but you have basically a black circle there. You can come in and fill it in and make sure it's really dark and really defined. A brief note is if you look here, let's say I really, really darken this upper corner and I leave this one kind of fuzzy. So it looks like that's a much clearer line than this one, but we haven't drawn a line, we're just shading. So this is an important lesson in that, that the, what appears to be a line is just the difference in two tones. Something to remember. So if I come in here, I can come and darken this bottom part and make that a little more of a defined line and kind of smooth that out. All right, so now I have a black circle. Right here, we still have our not really a white circle. So taking the same kind of thought, I can be like, hmm, how do I define this as a white circle? I can come in here and start darkening the area around it. And using the flat end to come around the edges, and you don't have to respect that line. Remember how this wasn't a very uh, circle looking circle? Now that I'm not really beholden to that line for the black hoop that I made earlier, we can come in and so now it looks just kind of like a, a thicker black hoop, kind of messy, right? So what does that mean we have to do? That means we have to differentiate the shade of what's in the circle to its environment. So as I keep working, and now remember, I don't want to make this, I don't want to make this disappear. So I'm eventually going to have to mess with the light and tone here and allow that to kind of breathe. But over here, I would say, go ahead and get that nice and dark. Let the viewer know that surrounding it is one color, and then on the interior 
is this white circle. Now, I have this white circle, but it's kind of oblong. So if I want, using the charcoal, I can come in and define it. And I'll be really honest, I'm not the best at doing like hardcore geometric shapes. Um, if you want to take an eraser to this, you know, feel free. It's also something kind of nice and meditative about it. If you can take a day or two or a minute or two out of your day and just kind of draw, um, really can't beat that. Um, it's a, a luxury many of us are not afforded, um, but I think it's an important, important part of being a human in a, a civilized society, um, or at least attempting to be. Um, and I'm just coming in and defining defining the edges. Again, I'm not drawing a line. I'm creating a difference in tones, and that difference in tones, your brain interprets as a border. And that's also one of the fundamental differences between painting and drawing. When you, people, when you hear people talk about this difference between painting and drawing, that's one of them, is that drawing a lot of times supposedly depends on the line whereas painting depends on the difference of tones. Um, now, I'm not that much of a purist, but it is part of the, part of the, the lexicon or the, the, uh, the vocab. And here, we see that we have one white circle and one dark circle. Again, no hoops, no hula hoops, no kind of uh, empty lines. If you, um, there's no, there's no ambiguity that this is now a white circle versus when it was just a hoop. We have no ambiguity that this is a dark circle. Um, it looks like it's kind of radiating in this, uh, in this space, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. Now, it is kind of gray. If you do have some compressed charcoal in the, in the area, you can come and really, um, really, really darken up the darks around this white circle and that will make it appear even lighter. Now, compressed charcoal is a little bit tricky because it will be much, much harder to erase. Um, and that's okay. Now, you may be asking, well, great, I've done one, one white circle and one dark circle. What does that mean? What's the advantage of doing this exercise? Well, one is to understand that, again, and I'll say this one more time, is that the difference in light and dark is what forms those lines and barriers. And then being sensitive to those areas of light and dark will allow you to manipulate them, to recognize them, to create them, and then manipulate them. So um, I have a bunch of this kind of loose charcoal on here. I'm going to Again, if you're doing this in your house, you may not want to do this on your carpet. I'm in my studio, so I can make a little bit of a mess. Um, and if I wanted to, I can come in with a, a eraser and tidy this up. I'm okay with it right now, leaving it as it is. I may come in here and darken some of this up. Or, you know, also some of you may have noticed this giant piece of charcoal. If you have something like this, you can easily, you know, lessen the grunt work for yourself. I'll reiterate, if you have like a 2B pencil, you can do this same exercise. It'll just take a little bit longer. Um, and by a little bit longer, I mean maybe 10 minutes. If you're watching, you know, a Netflix show, this is something you can easily do while you're sitting on the couch, um, while you're pretending to work, zoning out at your computer screen. A lot of different things. Don't do it while you're driving. Um, but this is the basic fundamental uh, first lesson of uh, the basic course. Now, I would recommend after you do this first one, if you have a sketchbook or if you have multiple pieces of paper, do this four or five more times and get creative with it. Say, okay, what happens if the white circle is this whole area and the black circle is inside of it? What happens when they overlap? How do you depict that? Later on, uh, in, by later on, I mean in about 48 hours, I will post five images of my five iterations of this exercise so everybody can compare. 
If you want to upload them uh, to the uh, Patreon site, um, I will make a, uh, an avenue for you all to do so. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, tuning in. Again, the first one is fairly straightforward, fairly basic, and I look forward to seeing what you all have made. Thanks. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the second part of our first video. As you can see right here, we have our drawing that we completed in the uh, first part. We have a white circle defined by the dark areas, by the dark tones around it. We have a dark circle defined by the very, very light tones around it. And we've accomplished the prompt. We've done it. On the other hand, we've ended up with a drawing that is kind of boring. Now, instead of getting disheartened by this, I'm going to remember that in our introduction, we talked about iteration that to get the most out of these exercises, we'll have to do them multiple times. Now, two things are gonna happen during that process. As you repeat it, there are parts of your brain that are sensitive to light and dark and to the arrangement of light and dark shapes are gonna get a little bit of a workout. They're gonna, they're gonna be, uh, all those pistons are gonna be firing. And the second thing that's gonna happen is as you kind of play around, and again, these iterations are largely influenced by this sense of play about how how people learn by messing around and playing with things so in addition to kind of exercising those uh, muscles in your mind in regards to light and dark your sense of play and experimentation should lead you to more creative solutions more creative image making so you know to practice what i preach i also do iterations of these exercises in fact aside from these lessons i out in these like little moments between projects or if I have a little moment where I catch myself doing nothing, you'll see me pull out my sketchbook and I'll do versions of these Bauhaus lessons or other lessons I've learned in my life. Again, keeping those, uh, those memories and those skills fresh um, is uh, super helpful. Um, basically, I think in any profession, but definitely in the life of an artist. Um, here is another uh, drawing I did. I try to execute this one in graphite and the drawings I'm going to show you I did two or three days actually after I did this one. So you don't have to sit down and bang all these out all at once. I knew the prompt. I did one while I was watching the video um, and then I uh, a few like two nights later I did I think two each night each one took me a, a couple of minutes. So these exercises are things you can do in like the little moments that you have um, during the day. So this one's done with graphite. Again, it's not all that interesting. We've introduced uh, more circles and more tones. We've tried to arrange them in a, an interesting fashion, but um, we have a little more to look at. Our eyes taken to different places, but it's kind of still a boring drawing. Again, I'm understanding that these are exercises and that I'm gonna have to do a few of them. Um, to kind of end up with something interesting. Also, I also recognize that these are, you know, making a fantastic image isn't the end goal of this. Part of it is also just to keep those parts of my mind um, exercised. We have a dark form, we have a light circle, and we'll notice on this what's different. We have a little bit on this drawing, but what's, uh, What's different on this one is that the circles really extend beyond the, uh, the borders of the page. And even on this dark area, we have this idea that the, the circle extends way out here and we don't even know like how thick it is. Like, so it could be, it a, it's suggests a massive form. We have also some, because of the ratio and orientation of these shapes, we have some suggestions of a representational space that is a space that might exist in reality. Um, here we have a sense of like maybe a sun or a celestial body and then two forms reflecting on a landscape. Um, and then if you turn it to your side, you have a suggestion of kind of a celestial um, orientation with like a, a large, you know, interstellar body orbited by two others. Um, and that's, look, look at the jumps we're making, even just from this first drawing to here. And now we have these uh, very strong suggestions of a pictorial space, um, just by kind of playing and experimenting with light and dark. 
I'm gonna slide these over just a little bit more. Excuse me, make room for this one. So this I believe is number four and we've darkened the tones on this iteration. Each tone is much more clearly defined, making them appear to be individual entities, um, more uh, kind of more solid forms. And therefore, when the form is more solid and more well-defined, its position in space is kind of state. It's, it, because it's as much as it's defined itself by its tone, it's also defined by the space around it. So everything becomes a little more solid, whereas this kind of is like kind of gaseous and per permeable. If this was one solid gray tone, it would seem, uh, it would seem much more impermeable. And this also, because these forms are clearly defined, their orientation in space against each other becomes much more defined and therefore much more interesting. We're kind of, we find ourselves kind of analyzing this border, the relation of these three shapes to each other. They almost read as figures, like looking top down like a family. Um, it just becomes a little more of an interesting drawing. And we haven't really deviated all that far from our prompt showing you kind of the depth and like how much you can do with just some simple, simple manipulation of light and dark. Now, this is for me in this run, this is the final iteration that I did over the past few days and I ended up with this. Again, now we have a form, a large dark form defined by large overlapping black circles and, we, and that creates this, uh, that all extend, all of them extend beyond the, uh, beyond the edge of the page. Within that dark form, we have multiple light circles, again, each defined by the exterior dark form. So we have this sense of we're moving down in scale in these forms. And now within each light form, we have some dark circles, again, defined by their... Uh, their light surroundings. So we have this kind of alternating pattern as we go down in, but the forms are irregular. So unlike that planetary form right here, where we have this kind of concentric motion, this kind of avoids that. We don't have a, we're not focusing on one point. So we have this kind of rhythm going. Um, and this, as you can see, is a much more interesting drawing. Also some of these light forms, instead of just being, I, I introduced a new player, I introduced an eraser on this one. Um, you don't have to, you can get much, just as interesting things without an eraser, but I introduced an eraser. So in this case, some of the light forms are also done by what the eye can read as an additive mark. So, and this just becomes a much more interesting drawing. It's interesting in multiple orientations. You know, I think I'm partial to this one right here, that really, really dark saturated tone from that compressed charcoal comes forward and makes all these forms look like they're moving forward in space, which I find really, really interesting. And again, these aren't great endeavors, but we can see kind of an interesting progression as, and I'm not, I don't have a specific agenda when I'm doing these things. I didn't say I was gonna end up here. I got here by just playing and enjoying this, uh, this exercise between light and dark. And that's how a lot of these exercises, especially in the Bauhaus basic course, are gonna go. We're going to have one prompt, and then you're gonna work through multiple iterations and end up somewhere very interesting and uh, a whole lot of fun. And I look forward to our next lesson together.